Good evening and welcome to our special Sunday night replay, the final game in round 20. It's the game between Melbourne and Fremantle at Colonial Stadium this afternoon. Well, Demons fans, stand by because the team is looking to cement a place in the top four and they did it in grand style and once again it was a bit of wizardry. It was the Jeff Farmer show once again. We're going to pick up the action in the first quarter early and there's been no score. Hope you enjoy it. Young Paul Hayes will be started on a half forward flank. He's been picked up by Peter Welsh, number 42 for the D's. Very much the uh, raging hot favourite to win the Norwich Rising Star, uh, Paul Hazelby. Fletcher, who's been a great servant of Fremantle since crossing over. A ball right in front of the Fremantle goal. Now chances with Simmons. He gets the handball to White. White from half back. Keeps the ball very low. Lands it in front of uh, Robertson. Couldn't control the football. Back goes Uze. Helped out by Leon Chelly. Ball spills to Cook. Back onto the left goes Cook. Hand pass, Jones. Straightens up and then oh. kicks straight to the opposition in Leon Chelly. Who gets Melbourne forward to half time for perhaps the first significant time. The ball close to the boundary line. Cook just overrunning it. Then had support from Jones. Goes again. Oh, Jones flat footed. Oh. Wasn't a great handball. Really set him up. Leon Chelly close to the line. And Cook able to keep it in. Just bang it onto the boot. And getting it to half forward. Good tight work. And the Dockers able to keep it alive. Black's handball though. Very wide. Simmons who's been impressive. Got a couple of demons inboard. Tries to find it a little dangerously. But gets way wide. And now Swartz streaming onto the ball. And in the sunshine. Farmer might come into play. Doesn't quite yet. And the Dockers are able just to hold things up. Neats back in the lineup. Gets it back to Swartz. Who didn't have a shot. Centered it instead. And that was terrific play. And Anthony McDonald takes the mark. Looks like Lee and Shelley now leaving the ground. They have been replaced by Simon Godfrey playing his first game. I think his finger. Yeah. Finger, is it? So, shot at goal for Melbourne. And it's McDonald from about 40 metres. Hits it pretty well. First goal of the game, Melbourne. Anthony McDonald. The goal kicker for the Demons, and they open their account. The match is about five minutes old. And a good year, this fella, uh, Robert. Young Anthony McDonald just adds to the midfield of a Woden Lee and Chally, of course, regaining a power. It was a kick from David Swartz. We just saw Coops earlier go inside 50 and kick the ball out in the full. But that was a great kick by David Swartz to find McDonald. Good football by the Ds. Leon Chelly uh, being attended to by the medical staff on the boundary line as players restarted. Powell playing his 50th game, Stephen Powell. The Melbourne cheer squad banner paid tribute to both Stephen Powell, the 50-gamer, and Jamie Shanahan, the retiree. But this bloke is a long way from retirement, one would think, Jeffrey Farmer. And he's taken the mark uh, much the same position as Anthony McDonald was when he kicked the goal only a moment or so ago. Good to see young Simon Godfrey get a handball in that too, Robert. Right we talked yeah. about him early in his first game. Farmer, oh, terrible kick. I guess we have to make some allowances, but, uh, gee, that was a bad mistake by Jeffrey Farmer. He just didn't kick it at all well, and eventually coming off the hands of the Fremantle opponent over for a boundary throw-in. Just got too close to the mark there, Rob. His opponent's young James Walker, I think, can play a bit of football. So that'd be a great contest for young Walker picking up the brilliant Jeff Farmer. Oh, we saw Norwich there, right with Shane Wawoden. The other end of the ground, young Daniel Shell. He's uh, lining up on Ingerson. We talked about the wind, the temperature, yeah, no problem with that. And certainly fine and sunny conditions. Just packed football in there. Powell trying to find a way through. He did really, but uh, Cook went straight back in, straight back into trouble. Now Powell again, he is a goal kicker. Does the discipline thing. It centres it. Uze and Green. Great mark. Green takes the mark. And he is a real goal kicker. He's kicked 16 goals for the year. But really has had limited opportunities in the last few weeks. Though that has really changed. And he has become a real option for them up forward. He's played 14 games. But a lot of them would have been on the interchange bench. Yeah, a lot of courage too, young Brad Green. The good thing about that, eyes were on the board. He didn't move away from the football. He knew quite well he was going to back in a bit of trouble. Took the punt, 
and his eyes stayed on the ball and was rewarded with a great mark there by Brad Green. I saw him last week, he kicked three or four goals. The good thing about this young fella, he can kick the ball nice and long as well. Well, we saw him here against the Kangaroos about three weeks ago, and he just pinpointed three goals through from similar accuracy required straight through the middle, and he's done the job. Well, that's a good start there for the Demons, and uh, no doubt today there'll be a big contest in the ruck. Daniel Bandy, I have a lot of time for as an on-ball ruckman. has got the job on Jeff Watt, who's been in outstanding form. And there's a discipline thing, I think, as you called, Hutto, about squaring the ball up there. Still having a shot there, Stephen Powell has had an outstanding year, Ooh. and the courage there from Brad Green was just absolutely brilliant. His own teammate, I think it was Adam Hoos, they cleaned him up there as well, and a brilliant goal by him. Green, the goal kicker, along with Anthony McDonald for Melbourne. And the roof wide open here at Colonial Stadium. So the conditions are just a little bit difficult for the players to contend with. Powell with Bootsma. Gathered in the finish there by uh, Brown. Then kick forward for the Demons in the direction of Neitz. His opponent, Pavlich, dispossesses Neitz. Back goes David Neitz. In turn, uh, Dodd. He can't break away. A real scramble at left half forward for the Demons and eventually the boundary umpire will take control and it will be thrown in about 55 metres around from the Melbourne goal. Looks like it might be uh, Walsh, is it? No, Godfrey coming off the ground and he's being replaced by Leon Chelly. So that was the change that was uh, initiated uh, when Leon Chelly hurt his finger. So back into the fray goes the... Uh, Consistent midfielder Andrew Leon Chelly must figure in the top three in Melbourne's best at ferrets, one would think, based on his performances this season. Uh, good to see the three umpires this afternoon includes my old mate Johnny Harvey out there. <laughs> good afternoon to the fa Harvey family. The ball about 60 out from goal, grabbed by Fletcher, just possessed. On top of it is Powell, almost thrown away by McDonald. Melbourne have really loaded up up forward. They've got uh, well, five players that are really capable of kicking lots of goals not much happening there when you look at it with Neitz back in the team you've got Neitz, Swartz, Robertson, Green and Farmer it's a good balance too isn't it between big and small players certainly is I don't doubt that about that and now down in the Dockers forward line they're going to rely on Clive Waterhouse to be their goal kicker Matthew Collins has got the job he's been in and out of the uh, Melbourne side so it's a big job for, for Collins as well today Cook kicks onto the wing Coops the backing back and taking a very solid mark there's Daniel Ward Coops is an important player for Fremantle. Does give them that little bit of uh, liveliness through the middle of the ground and through the half forward line. Good combination by the well, Demons and Walsh. Just so good at struggling, shrugging off those tackles. Wasn't a great kick. Still a chance though. 40 out from goal. Prescott over the top of it. Scratching, trying to get it. Jones found a way through. Made it tough for Fletcher who could have got a free kick. Didn't. There's Walker going in. Getting the handball, well, not really out of trouble. Demons able to keep it alive. But, uh, headed towards the boundary line again, and Ingerson, who's come a long way up the ground with young Daniel Shell, sees it out. I just get surprised sometimes, Robbo, with the Dockers sometimes when they try and overuse the football. When you've got a forward line set up of Modra and, of course, Waterhouse, you've got to get the ball quickly and give them a chance to be one-on-one. -on -one. I agree with that. Interesting that White has pushed forward from this throw-in, and he's dragged Daniel Bandy with him. So the Demons really looking to stretch the Dockers for height up forward. Walsh might go in that direction. White will come at this one, and he didn't end up really going for the mark. Tried to spoil. Jones could have got a free again for holding on. Bootsma kicked it out towards the boundary umpire. He had nothing else on offer, and it was a good kick in the end. It's a bit of an arm struggle here at the moment. I mean, the D's have kicked the first two goals. Dockers are probably... Only gone inside 50 on a few occasions. Here we are, some of the possessions here. Melbourne's had 15 kicks, 9 handballs, and 5 marks. The Dockers are 9 kicks, 15 handballs. So, opposite around. And yet to take a mark, according to uh, those yeah, no stats. Marks. Uh, yeah. So the Fremantle side across half forward, Walsh. Got time to recover. And then gets the handball across to Collins. Collins nearly run down by Waterhouse. Kicks the ball to half forward. Spills to the back. Under pressure, Clement. Grab, didn't have the ball, play goes on to straighten up Powell, handball away, Schwartz, flying shot at goal, and the Demons have got their third on the scoreboard. David Schwartz kicks a goal.
Melbourne three goals, 18. Fremantle yet to score. Well, there's some early concerns here for the Dockers, no doubt about that. I know, as I said, it's only early three goals at the moment. It's just the way the Ds are going inside their 50 and uh, doing it fairly easy. We see Powell here step out. I thought he was going to kick for goal here. Inside 50, Melbourne 7 to Fremantle Dockers only 2. And there's Swartz now. I reckon the Ds are kicking against a probably a 2 or 3 goal win. So, early challenge for Fremantle now is just to get back somewhere like on level terms. The Demons have dominated. Hazelby gets the ball on the boot. His first kick of the afternoon. They need a marking option. Shell try to provide at least brought the ball to ground. Coops' kick into Modra wasn't bad, but just a little bit too strong. Oh, don't tell me! That was amazing! That would have been the most amazing goal of all time, just about, Dougie. Unbelievable, wasn't it, Hutto? Yeah, it was It nearly just... hit the behind post, and yet silly nearly went, it still that. almost went through for a goal. That just kept coming. The Melbourne player just stopped there, young Welsh. And just hit the post at the bottom of it. So, uh, Uze to kick in. And finds his fellow midfielder in Leon Celli in turn to Ragoni, providing great running support. Guy Ragoni goes short. The lead was on it. Good lead, too, by David Neese. He read that from a fair way up the field. Provided a target and was honoured with a probably a nice little kick in the finish. It, uh, didn't have a lot on it, and Neat's able to run in and take the chest mark quite safely. And if he kicks a goal, that will be three of Melbourne's goals will have been kicked from much the same area. He has kicked and missed. So Neats, the first blemish on the scoreline for the Demons. 3-1, 19, lead Frio behind. Funny old kick coming in from Stephen Coops. Bouncing all the way around and nearly going through for a goal in the finish. Pavlich to bring it back into play. You speak about a, an advantage with the wind. I think when you get down at either end, Doug, you'll just feel down at ground level, it is just so strong it's not funny. I nearly got, when I went down to interview Neil Danner, I nearly got blown off the feet. It was that strong coming out of the tunnel down there where Melbourne came onto the arena. Ingerson's handball missed its target by a big margin. Hazelby dispossessed. McDonald, Ragoni front on tackle provided by Coops. Um, umpire is forced to bounce. Just struggling at the moment, Robbo, in the midfield, the Dockers. Uh, Adrian Fitch has only had the three touches. Uh, young Hazelby's only had three or, three or four touches himself. Then again, he did start on a half forward flank. But it's a midfield area with this, so he's certainly getting beaten this stage of the game. Big punch forward there uh, by Neitz. Now a chance is for Dodd. Dodd's short kick is all right, and the mark is taken by Fletcher. Oh, he was in oh. two minds, and then messed up the hand pass. Gave it to his opponent in Wo Woden. His kicker towards the forward pocket region. Gathered by uh, Robertson. Now kick forward by Green. Smothered off the boot. And a boundary throw. And you look at the hair on the, that young fella's uh, hair there. Young there, Green, yeah. And you can see it really blowing strongly, the wind down there at ground level. 3-1. Fremantle. Just to behind. Dodd again. Gee, if you take a risk there, he was lucky. He probably got uh, the advantage there of the umpiring decision. The umpires are John Harvey, Justin Schmidt, and Corin Rowe. Corin Rowe indicating there that the tackle on Dodd was too high, and his short pass has given the opportunity for Pavlich. So the Docker is trying to find a path out of defence. Prescott with the ball. He's got Dodd on for a short pass, but again, that's going very wide well he has to pretty much do that anyway goes a little bit longer Coops weighted down and flying out of the top Fuster who takes the mark is a talented player doesn't always get the most out of that talent good push off from Waterhouse that time should have the edge of experience against Collins sends it long towards full forward Cook comes from behind didn't take the mark McDonald Lee and Shelley, and they can run again and really get them going out to the outer wing. Uze on the left boot, out to Robertson, who's a long way from home. He goes to ground and uh, does do that quite a bit. Goes inboard to White, still 65 out from goal. Able to lay the handball off. Ward sets the pass up. Farmer, oh, he dropped it. 
Again, maybe the wind having an impact, but Farmer might do it the hard way. Farmer does it the hard oh, way. He doesn't. He hasn't. He has to make it look <laughs> harder than it is, and he kicks it. <laughs> Just to Melbourne's fourth goal. They lead 4 1 to one point. Considering he missed one from 30 metres out directly at front for the four. Fletcher kicks the Dockers to within scoring distance. The ball spills to the back, gathered by Nicholson. Collins dispossessed by Waterhouse. Modra, Modra! Oh, he's done that a few times in his career, Tony Modra. But on this occasion, just misses to the left. A couple of behinds now for a Fremantle, 4-1 to two points. There's a few fans here, the cheer squad had a good banner for the players to run through. We're watching Adam Uze kick it out for Melbourne. Great mark taken by Ingerson. Could be 50 there. No, no it certainly shouldn't have been. No, good umpiring. Oh, it wasn't a good kick though, not good decision making. Black, quick with the handball, into the open spaces. No, went through Norwich, shelled it well to, well to knock it out. But Oh, who's a well trapped? Was, was he Let tripped or was he caught? Caught in possession from uh, behind. Up by let it go. Now, Hazelby, can he put it through? Handballs it out, sets it up. Shell back to Waterhouse. Standing start. Had right, to get kid. the leverage onto it. And he managed to do that and straighten up. So Fremantle on the board. And it's Clive that kicks it through with his second kick of the day. 1-2 playing 4-1 here at Colonial. I think it's the difference between the two sides at the moment. Here we see Uze. He arrived, I agree with you now, Rob. That was a good tackle by Cook. I thought it may have been a leg, but no, he was dragged down from behind. And there we are. Good pressure there from the uh, Mitchell. Cook again, and a great tackle once again. And there's the brilliant hands of young Hazelby to set this play up here. Brilliant goal there to Waterhouse. That's his job. Good to see a youngster playing just his third game. Uh, Hutto's already mentioned Daniel Shell. He had the presence of mind not to try and have a snapshot himself. Gave the hand pass off to Waterhouse, who did well to kick the goal. It's up to half forward for uh, Melbourne. Kicked out of there by Dodd. And it'll be thrown in about 65, 70 metres around from the Melbourne goal. Demons have kicked 4-1, Frio a 1-2. Sorry, Rob, I think too with Daniel Sheldon, when he gave the handball to Clive Waterhouse, he put a block on him, put a shepherd. A lot of kids would get a handball, stop, think they've done their job. He continued on his merry way, did a good, good job. Yep, yep, very good stuff. Frio across their half-forward line. The hand pass came out from McDonald. He'll get it back. He'll have a shot at goal. Kicks it rather ordinarily to the front of the goals. Umpires found a free kick. It is going to... Looks like as it needs going Leach. to get it right in front. Holding onto his jumper was Matthew Pavlich. The umpire was in a good position. He was only 10 or 12 metres off to the right as the ball came in. Oh, there was a lot in that one, Rob, I don't think. Just looking at the replay. Well, it's going to register another goal for Melbourne because David Neitz is only 12 metres out directly in front. And he pops it through for a goal for the Demons. David Neitz gets his first. And if I was in the coach's box for Fremantle, what I'd be concerned about is the ease with which Melbourne have kicked their five goals, albeit that Jeffrey Farmer popped one through from close to the boundary line, but just not enough physical pressure being put on the players on that forward line for Melbourne. That's no a doubt. terrible decision. It is. You're dead right, uh, Robbo. No doubt about that. When the Dockers go forward, it's just a scramble forward. They just, it appears they're sort of hoping to get a goal, but the Ds are doing a lot easier than side 50. Matthew Pavlich can sound him, count himself pretty unlucky, I reckon. And that free kick to David Neitz didn't seem to be a lot in it. White giving them first use with a really big climb into the air. Cook trying to turn things around for Fremantle. They need to get the ball moving a little bit quicker and get it into their forward line. But uh, that's not the way to do it. Prescott's kick taken by Daniel Ward. Swartz presents himself on the wing. He can go short to Powell. Still could go short to Powell. No, he doesn't. He goes along and a half forward. Robertson needs. Oh, it went past both players into the danger area. But uh, um, look like young Walker. I yeah, think, Walker. Uh, kicking it onto the wing. No mark there. Shell. Ingerson within. Powell taking it away. Advantage taken by or taken uh, and driven down by Nathan Brown towards full forward and backing back 
taking the mark is David Neitz. No, he's played on. He no, no. He mustn't have gone off his line. He very nearly did. What a great luxury is really Neil Dano who has with David Neitz coming back in the side to play at full forward. You've got Squatch at centre half forward. Just so important that Anthony Ingleson down at centre half back so that it allows Neitz to play up forward. He must do a big job at centre half back. Can kick his second here in a minute. Neitz does the job. What a start by Melbourne. Six goals to one. Judged that a hell of a lot better, didn't he, than his opponent. I think his opponent there was uh, Brendan Fuster. But maybe the ball coming in. Uh, we'll have another look here, Duck. Uh, that's Ingerson, Powell. And the kick came in from Brown. Just watching what happens here. Jumping early, Fuster. Yeah, jumped too early. I think Pavlich may be playing uh, at yeah. fullback on Neitz, but got caught out of position on that occasion. But he, he just jumped too early, Fuster, on that occasion. So six goals won in a quarter that still has five minutes to run. So it could be uh, possibly an eight-goal quarter if the Demons keep going at this rate. Kick forward by Bootsma. Taken there by Brown. His high kick. The ball lands at half foot, judging it better again. The Melbourne players are controlling the air. Robertson has marked... And he's only uh, 40 metres, maybe a little closer, 35 metres out directly in front. And what a great position to shoot for goal from. They've had three or four shots from in that corridor, which makes the angle inconsequential. No doubt, Robbo. Six marks inside 50 for Melbourne, none to the Dockers. Robertson shoots for goal. They've got their seventh on the scoreboard, the Dees. Well... Just Hello, looks Robert, like a you... walk in the park. You can't play football yes. with any impressions of having a walk in the park. Well, this is always going to be the concern, the fact that the Melbourne have a more dangerous forward line. And I've touched on it earlier. They rely on Waterhouse and, of course, Modric is a 100-goal kicker to be kicking their goals. But with Melbourne, they've got so many players up in their forward line, they have the ability to kick three or four goals. That is the difference between the two sides. 7-1 to 1-2. Brilliant start by Melbourne. Can the Dockers do anything about it? They've got four and a half minutes in this quarter to try and do something. Fletcher getting them moving. Hazelby versus Walsh. Good battle, that one. Well done, Hazelby. Because Walsh is a very tough man. Shell went to ground but took the mark. So that's well done. Now, Bandy has pushed forward, was on his own for a minute. Oh, that's a oh, disappointing kick for me. Why him. would you do that? Young fellow, not a good decision making, but the execution in particular wasn't good. Liam Shelley goes out very wide, Jones. Sees it over away from Robertson's hands. I just reckon too, Robbo, maybe a move for Damien Drum could be the fact that Clem Michael on the bench, maybe bring him onto the ball, into the ruck to run with Jeff White, and maybe push Bandy forward to be the chance to get a mark inside 50, because they've had no one's taken a mark yet inside their 50 forward line. Fair point. Yep, good suggestion, I would say. Well, 7 1 to 1 2, uh, a couple of changes wouldn't go astray because that scoreboard is very, very lopsided. And gathered by Walsh. Goes across to half back where White has made good position. Plays on. Athletically gets behind Coops. And the kick has been taken by Uze. Uze in towards full forward. Bandy getting back. Nearly the mark to Farmer. Crumbs attempted there by Neitz. Couldn't quite control the football. Pavlich is there for the Dockers. And the umpire calls for a bounce. 7-1 to 1-2. Melbourne lead. Bandy now playing a kick behind play. Uh, or more than a kick behind play. The loose man in defence. Just trying to fill up those holes 30 metres out from Melbourne's goal. Fuster able to get it down, and here's Bandy running onto it. Now you look up, he's got a one on one battle out wide with Hazelby. And this time a play opposed to Ward. But I just wonder with Bandy there, not just Bandy, but some of the Dockers players, why kick the ball to a 50 50? Kick the ball over the top, put it to a bit of space to your advantage. I mean, if you're going to go short, you've got to find your target. You can't make it a 50 50 contest. Fletcher doing the ruck work. That's because Bandy is uh, well off the pace, way behind, uh, as I said, playing that loose man in defence. So Melbourne 7 1 and Fremantle 1 2. Nathan Brown goes short dangerously, so. The difference is, though, he at least hit his target. The Dockers are missing. Yep. Followed Did well then too, he yeah. followed the ball up himself. Able to get it away to Brown and long kick into the danger area again. 
the path cleared by Swartz, but uh, he gave it up by just getting the handball away. Tablets kick out towards the boundary, and it's over now. Black pursuing it, and we'll see a throw in. 7 1 43 to 128, and there's just two and a half minutes remaining in this opening quarter. Gee, a couple of good ball getters sitting on the bench uh, with uh, Clem Michael, too, Callahan and uh, McManus. McManus. Yeah. And when your scoreboard looks like this, uh, I just can't believe that uh, the interchange would not be used a little bit more to try and, even just to try and confuse the opposition. You're correct, Robbo. Waterhouse, short kick, and Bootsma is marked. That's so the close mark. to, yeah. That's the first mark. Inside it? 50. Inside 50. Well, and he's playing on a half-back flank. I'm tipping young Bootsma. Well, with two minutes left, they might get their second goal. But still, they've been completely outplayed by Melbourne in this first term. The real good thing about the Demons is apart from Farmer's snapshot against the boundary line, their goals have come from straight in front. Mungrel punt kick, goal! <laughs> well, Jared Healy spoke about Woomer bangers. Well, I reckon that was a double, double, triple Woomer banger, that. That certainly was, no doubt about that, Robert. We see Bandy going forward, as uh, Hutto mentioned, he's playing a kick behind the play. Good play by Waterhouse here. He gets back quickly, doesn't turn his back on the play. Chips the ball over to Young Boots. Well, I'll say Young Boots, he's 27 years of, of age, but a good, good, well, a shot and kick, but a goal. Well, Peter Hudson. Yeah, yeah you, tell me, you, you, you would have seen a heck of a lot of Peter Hudson. <laughs> he kicked goals from everywhere in that 50-metre arc, <laughs> and, and like they went that. through in every <laughs> different way. But by gee, he could kick straight Peter Hudson. 7-1 to 2-2, two, two. so Fremantle getting one late goal. Can they get another one in this quarter? Oh, good smother. Yeah, good pressure, and that's the sort of pressure that they need to apply. Long kick, though. Out away from Ward under the wing. Well trapped by Rigoni. This is Lee and Chally now as the Demons advance. Pumping it along to full forward. Oh, great leap. Meets us. Dominated in the air. And you would think... Well, you'd wonder how long he'll stay with Pavlich as his opponent. Well, there's a perfect example there, Hutto and Robbo. I mean, the fact that when Melbourne side do get the football, they go back to the corridor. When they do get forced out wide, they're prepared to kick it long back into their forwards to be one-on-one. -on -one. That has been a difference as well for the uh, Ds. What a quarter by the Demons. They've kicked oh, eight, and Neitz kick. has kicked three of them. Great return for David Neitz. Fantastic start by the Demons. Eight goals, two to two goals, two in the opening quarter. And uh, really, the Dockers had it in front of them right from the word go. The Coca-Cola AFL Premiership Season 2000. Proudly brought to you by Victoria Bitter. Mitsubishi Magna V6. One drive and ear hot. McDonald's. McCatch, match and win. And Telstra. Making life easier. And we rejoin the action early in the second quarter and the Demons leading by 36 points. Dockers with the football, Bootsma. Gets pretty good distance out towards oh, the wing. Oh. Well done by Kickett. Hand pass missed its target, put Cook under enormous pressure and they are dispossessed. Well, Powell made a mistake there. A rare mistake by a Melbourne player. Bootsma kicks it forward. A uh, bit of a contest at half forward. That tackle a little high, according to the umpire in that area. And it is Coops kicks the ball across the half forward line, and the mark is taken by Bandy. Now, you mentioned about Bandy maybe going forward to try and put some pressure on the Demon defence. Well, if he can kick a goal here, it'll be the first goal of the second term and a very important punishing goal for Fremantle they've been outplayed so far Bandy's kick is very good it's a goal to Frio kicked by Daniel Bandy Daniel Bandy kicks his first goal Fremantle get their third 8-3 to 3-3 Melbourne by 30 points yeah a bit of hard work there to get the ball forward Dale to kick it took a terrific mark Stephen Coops great vision by uh, Stephen Coops here he went back he looked up he saw Tony Modri was covered and there's a switch kick to find Daniel Bandy. And the move has been good by Damien Drum to move Bandy forward. So 8-3 to 3-3. Maybe that'll help 
Fremantle just chip away at the Demons and just edge back into this game. Blacks, handballs out wide. Norwich just getting boot to ball. Cook, who's been good for them so far, as far as number of possessions goes. Wasn't the greatest kick in the world, but it was at least to the right side of Waterhouse. Fighting on and scratching on his Collins, and he does well in the end, wins out. Couple of options for him. One in short was Walsh. That's where he goes. He looks up. Hasn't got a great deal ahead as far as loose men goes, but he's got a couple roaming wide at half forward. Robertson got edged under it by Clement. Goes again. Swartz sneaks in. Had something in mind. A little handball at the back. Green over oh, the top of the ball. Free kick. Oh, he, he missed the Melbourne free kick and then gave the free R1. <laughs> uh, Black gets it away. Dodd back to Hazelby. And oh, again, it's a bit scrappy. Well done, Fuster. Yeah, it was too, Hutto. Able to put the hand to the chest. The tackling, breaking technique. And drive it long. Numbers with Melbourne, but Modra got into good position and, and what, takes the mark. But what happened? They got it up there reasonably quickly, quickly didn't yep. they? Well, he was, he was one against robot. two, but and certainly the kick was there for Tony Modra to use his body. When you've got a player like Modra down there, one-on-one -on -one he's very, very hard to beat, but when you want to chip it around and play around the football, it is amazing. Is this game complicated, Doug? No, it's very simple. It's a very basic game, Robbo. Kick the ball long to Tony Modra, one-on-one, -on -one, he'll do the job for you. <laughs> Starting to sound like a coach, aren't I? Yeah, you are. You're a frustrated coach. You've caused enough <laughs> trouble for coaches in recent weeks, <laughs> Doug. What? Oh, oh, no! Would you be believe down? it? <laughs> Modra into the man on the mark. And McDonald takes the mark as the Demons suddenly turn their defence oh, into a tackle. It was going to be an attack. Lane Shelley. Oh, oh, the easy way out there. Oh, he blew the whistle for the mark and then kind of He did, kick. yeah. Let's have another look at that in a second. Let's. Oh, oh dear, we can. <laughs> This is a comedy oh. of errors. Tony Modra, please go back and kick the goal. 8 3 to 3 3. Powell sending it high. Neat lurking dangerously. Couldn't take it. Robertson charging through, trying to get boot to ball. Not able to do it. Clement and Black able to get the ball over the boundary line and out of bounds. Let's have a, have a look at a couple of these. Lee and Shelley. Well, the tackle was all right. It was tackle. fantastic the, tackle. He, Troy Cooks had about six or seven tackles, and they've been first class. But he tackles. blew the whistle to, to the award mark. the mark. You're right, and that yeah. was the easy way out. <laughs> yeah, it was. Back live with Hazelby. Oh, this yeah. kid can play. Dodd, scrappy kick. Up to the wing. Well done. Yeah, very good work again. Troy Cooks getting I even more of the footy. And now. if they took a leaf out of the hard working players and they all lifted their their output, I'm sure that they could be in this game. The scoreboard says they trail by five, but it's not a huge margin. Fletcher quickly onto the left boot. Looking for Waterhouse. Just a little bit too much depth on it. And it's Walsh who needs to get some support. He might find it with Nicholson. Modra chasing after him. Good chase from Tony Modra. Putting the pressure on Nicholson, who in the end just dribbles it under the wing. Wasn't a bad kick in itself, though, because Swartz was coming out. Almost threw that away. Nicholson fired up. Got the handball away. White able to wobble onto his right boot and set it to half forward. Robertson in front. The crowd love him. They rise when he goes near the ball. Cook. Well, kick it might have been. Well tackled. Grabbed by Swartz. Again, good tackling by the Dockers. Swartz gets the handball out wide. Oh, Green trying to finesse maybe a bit too much, but Powell, he overdid it as well with the Dockers working hard. And Bootsma eventually takes the mark. Good smother in that passage of play from Dodd. Dodd. Yep. And eventually Bootsma gets the ball to Walker. Walker, he'll have to be very, very disciplined if he's to try and control Jeff Farmer. Short kick, Norrish. Back to Walker, doesn't mind carrying the ball, James Walker. Fourth to kick with the left, wobbly old punt kick. Equally as wobbly as it bounces. Gathered by Collins, handball to Leon Chelly. Back to Collins. Collins down the ground, kicks the ball in towards half forward. Punch from behind. Farmer tried to crash his way through. Melbourne fans screaming for a free kick, not forthcoming. So the umpire will bounce about 40 metres from the Melbourne goal. I think you said Robbo before, and they may have been Hutto, but gee, the Dockers certainly have lifted their work rate. They have a feeling they can go here. They've put enormous pressure on the Melbourne midfield. That's what they had to do, and they certainly are doing it at the moment. That was a good non-decision, that one, wasn't it? Definitely wasn't a free to farm. No, no free there. Fuster doing the ruck work. Gets first hand to it. Goes wide. McDonald gathers. Shot at goal. Way off line, out of bounds on the full. 
free kick back there to be taken by Dodd. No. And uh, it may, yes, it is Dodd eventually that will take the free kick. Matthew Pavlich runs down to try and provide him with a target. He goes further to Waterhouse, gathered here by Collins. Handball off. Hand pass goes out from McDonald. Walsh to the front of the goals. Melbourne looking for a mark. Not forthcoming. At the base of the pack, Jeffrey. Kick it. Powell, Ragoni, flying shot at goal by Ragoni is out on the full as well. And this is the key. In the first quarter, they were marking, having shit shots at goal and converting. Now, putting, being put under pressure, they're making a few mistakes and all of a sudden there's a bit of uncertainty in the minds of the Melbourne players. Norwich takes it away. Modra streaming out well. Just can't take it. Nicholson was right there with him. Trying to oh, throw. Was there a throw? No, the play says play on. on. Walsh. Oh, yes. Well woven. Out to Collins. And they're away again, the Demons. Green just cleared a path and let White come in from the front and take the mark. Too far out to score. Swartz might be a target doubling back, but Neat's coming out. Pavlich with him. Swartz doing the roving. Johnson is clear. Just on the ground. Good run. Good vision too. And Green takes the grab. That was just good football by the Melbourne side there. David Swartz to the trying to kick the ball over his shoulder. Fed the handball back here to Travis Johnson. As you said, Ado just came on the ground. Last week he got Polax late in the game when they played St Kilda. And that was just great vision by Travis Johnson. He's, a, he's an exciting young player. We talked about Brad Green earlier. He's kicked 1-1. And he has a habit of taking marks directly in front of goal too. So that's to his credit. From 30 out, he Good slots kick. it. Melbourne answer back with a goal. Well, they have been struggling uh, so far in the second term to just break loose the uh, Dockers. I mean, the Dockers have lifted their work rate. They put enormous pressure on the midfield. Once again, as we said, David Swartz twisted and turned and feedback handball. And that was an absolute brilliant kick by Travis Johnson. Set up Brad Green for his second goal. He's now been picked up by Dale Kicker. Uh, Melbourne, 9-3, Fremantle 3-3. Three, three. So Frio with one goal in this term, and Melbourne with one goal. Kick forward by Ragoni into the left forward pocket. Walker and Farmer. Farmer gets rid of Walker. Now it's out on the full, isn't it? No, it may have come off a, uh, a body. Boundary umpire has decided to throw it in. We have established that uh, Fremantle wearing black armbands in respect to uh, the Chief Executive Officer, David Hatt, who we believe uh, David Hatt's father died during the week. If uh, anyone in Perth is wondering what that's all about, so our condolences to the Hat family. Fremantle working overtime to try and clear their half-back line. Still a chance, no, Prescott confronted. Leon Celli handball back. Boots moves out a fair bit of the footy. Gets it over his left shoulder in the direction of uh, Coops. Eventually taken over by Ward and it'll be thrown in on centre wing. You're right, Robbo. He's been very good, Brad Boots, off a half-back flank. He's had 12 kicks now, one handball and three marks, and he's kicked a goal coming down the ground. He's worked very hard in the half-back line. Michael infringes by going over the top. Free kick of Jeff White. Ex Rio player. Yeah. Nine hit-outs he's had today, Jeff White. Three marks. Nice. Good solid contact in the Swartz direction. He put it to Graham, put it in front. Lee and Shelley lays it off. Uze puts it through. So back at the centre, Jeff White has played uh, a very good quarter and a bit so far. Uze again caught, shrugged the tackle. Handball, leaving it behind was Woe Woden. Kicked away by Bootsma. Hazelby and Black combined. Black's kick was very poor by his standards. Kicked forward by Brown. Mark nearly taken by uh, Neitz over the top where was Fuster looking for the free kick. Are the Fremantle boys? But the umpire has decided to bounce about 40 metres from the Melbourne goal. I'll tell you what, Rob, I'll tell you what 
uh, Jason Norris has done a very good job. He's got the job on Shamo Woden. He's only had six touches, Shamo Woden, and uh, Norris has had five, so he's been pretty good. Fair point. This is Black. Black, who uh, is very much a, a midfielder, but he's kicked back to a three-on-one, which favours Melbourne. Travis Johnson <laughs> falls over. Cook dispossesses. Well done by Troy Cook. Brown goes in. Cook's kick off the ground. Gets it inside the forward 50 for Fremantle. They've got to get a goal here, don't they? Handball over the top. Oh. Modra, look away handball. Oh. Went too far, and Melbourne will get out of trouble. You wouldn't believe it. It looked an absolute Monty that the uh, Fremantle side were going to score. And now Melbourne will carry the ball all the way down the ground. Johnston kicks it into the forward 50. Not quite the forward 50. Kicked away by Black. Out towards the uh, wing position where Collins has <laughs> taken possession. He's well tackled. Ball spills to Hazelby. Hazelby goes in the direction of Great and kick. finds Modra. No, brilliant defensive work by Nicholson. Collins a little high there by Hazelby. But the umpire allows play to go on and it'll be thrown in right half forward for Fremantle. Fremantle a 3-3, Melbourne a 10-3. It is a 42-point advantage enjoyed by Melbourne. To see a few f players falling over, Robbo and Hutto here, a couple of times, unforced mistakes by losing their balance and losing their feet. Very rude of you to laugh at them too, Dougie. Regoni, it's <laughs> all through half back. And Demons away, Uze again, not able to take the mark this time. Dodds handball, crunch on Black, who did pretty well to recover and feed it out. Clem Michael found Fletcher. It's all fairly stagnant as he looked up. That's a pretty good kick. Just oh. had too much on it for Bandy. The oh, idea he was could have gone a bit harder. Have marked those. Of course he could have. Yeah, the idea was certainly right. Robertson, was he hanging on to some jumper there of Clement? The pile lets it go. Black takes the mark from Clement's kick and then goes again to Bandy. Couldn't take the mark. Smacked away by Woden. Good pressure though. The Demons able to keep it alive. Go on. Tackle. Well tackled, but he's still got hands clear. Leon Shelley had to work hard to hoik that ball back in board. Michael picked out Bootsma. Now Prescott. They can move and run. Waterhouse, the ball out in front of him. Will it sit? Yeah, sort of. Then he fumbles it and goes again. Cook's leading back into the square. He's going to be in best position to mark. Needs to use his body against Walsh. Didn't quite do that. Sun might have been a factor. Whatever the case, they're out of trouble now. Nicholson on the end of Brown and McDonald's work. And out onto the wing. Collins will try and push clear. Kick it wouldn't let him go. Well done, kick it. Forcing the turnover. Well done, Waterhouse. Getting it back to kick it. Unloads it. Good kick this time in the Modra direction. He should be able to find the middle this time. Tony Modra. And yes, he kicks it into the second tier. Well, they're still making hard work at the uh, the Dockers. They're still chipping the ball around, trying to create some opportunities up forward here. Dale Kicker, I think you called out. That was a great smother. I think he put Matthew Collins in two minds, and it was a good play by him. And this is a bloke you've got to get the ball down there very quickly to be one on one. Nicholson, I don't think he's played a lot of football at fullback, so it'd be unusual for him. Cook's been terrific too. He's had 11 touches, and he's had six very, very hard tackles. Been outstanding. So, Tony Modra. Kicks the third goal, fourth goal for Fremantle. They're second in this term. But more importantly for Fremantle, they've managed to hold Melbourne up. Melbourne kicked eight goals to two in the first quarter. So far, two goals apiece in the second term. Appealing for the free kick was uh, Michael. Wo Woden industriously at uh, ground level. Powell Fletcher the tackler. The kick goes forward there from Godfrey. It's right in front of goal. Chance there for Green. This is a ah. goal. Goal to Farmer. He was always onto that, wasn't he, Jeffrey? Second goal to Farmer. And breaking loose of the shackles there, the Demons, to get their 11th goal. They lead by 42 points. Always going to get that. Uh, no doubt about that, Robbo. Here we see young Godfrey playing his first game, kicked the ball forward. The ball come over. Green played by Green by pushing the ball forward for his teammate. Robertson tried to get it forward. And there's young James Walker just caught up the pace here on that occasion. Good goal by Farmer. A move's been made uh, by Damien Drum. Prescott is off the ground now, who's playing on Adam Uze. It looks like Sean McManus has come onto the ground for his first run for the game. Maybe you should be a coach, Dougie. Out of right. the middle. Michael gets the ball forward. You wouldn't want to, though, would you? No, not yet. 
Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Ingerson well wrapped up. 40 <laughs> metres out from goal. They had a few more zeros to his contract, Hutto. Yeah, there might be second thoughts. I love working with you blokes. I'm happy to sit here. 11-3-69, <laughs> <laughs> playing 4-3-27. So it must be a frustrating day for Damien Drum. And all those in the Dockers coaching box. Uze, the handball out. And the kick from Collins. Brown right over the line and out of bounds. So 69 playing 27 here at Colonial Stadium. And that's uh, Troy Simmons preparing to uh, come back onto the ground. He started on the ground. But, uh, he's been on the bench now for... A fair part of this first half. Knocked forward. Black and uh, then Hazelby. Hazelby's kick in the direction of... Oh, nearly marked at Waterhouse. Oh, being held. Oh, I'll tell you what, I reckon he did a little bit of the pushing out, didn't he? How was the he, left yeah. arm to right. keep the Melbourne player away? Jeez, I'll tell you what, Robert, have a bit of a look at this one again. He uh, stood his ground here at Clive Waterhouse. I reckon he was happy to throw the left arm out to keep his opponent away. Do you think it was 50 50? He would do it. On. Go on. Let it go. On. Yep. I won't anyway. disagree with Robert there. I won't disagree with that one. Waterhouse has been paid a free kick for holding against his Melbourne opponent. So Clive Waterhouse, the chance to kick his second goal. And he's missed. Off to the left. One goal, one to Clive Waterhouse. Disappointing Here we are again. I wasn't, I wasn't much in that one, Robert. I, think no, I wouldn't right. have thought that it was worthwhile. Yeah. I mean, you can you, then you've got to make sure that the decision is exactly right because you're telling me that the Melbourne player is holding, yep. whereas I thought Waterhouse was using his left arm to fend yep. his opponent off. On of the wing, Robertson had the big fire, misjudged it. Rigoni, long, Farmer lurking, needs at the back. Farmer, play on and bang! <laughs> Goal lead at the long break, 12-4 to four goals for, and a chance to build on percentage, which in the final wash-up might be all important for positions in the eight. Let's go to the action early in the third quarter, no addition to the score. But um, yeah. Paul Hazelby has been tremendous in a, in a side that's only won seven matches. Ravanauskas has played in a... Uh, 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 a ter terrific side that's won every game. Farmer plays on and kicks a goal. He's got four. Yeah, I, I, he's smart, isn't he, Jeffrey? Uh, Farmer? He's very good, and uh, I think he's borders uh, on Learism. Yeah. Yeah. Does he border on Learism? No, I think it's just confidence. And, okay, uh, I think yeah. maybe you know, that little bit of arrogance, and when you're that good, sometimes, brother, you may oh, yeah, yeah, you feel that way, look that way. Yep. Is that what you found as a dougie? I, I, I think uh, he borders on that little bit of time. Look, 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 watch that. It's just. just is that smart or... Uh, I thought he could have went back and had a shot. But he got away from it. That's how good he is. <laughs> He's a character, <laughs> isn't he? A real character. Well, Jeffrey Farmer has kicked four straight. Melbourne 13-4 lead, Fremantle 4-5. In the uh, very early part of the third quarter, gee, they look sick, the scoreline for Fremantle. Oh. Even McManus is getting caught. And Sean McManus has been one of their better players. He is the uh, co-captain with uh, Adrian Fletcher of the Fremantle side. And he just looks like a young man now who's lost all confidence. Kick forward, not marked by uh, Schwartz. Kicked away by Dodd, close to the boundary line. Gathered by Brown. Play allowed to go on. Now Green. Ordinary kick onto the chest of the opponent in Dodd. Norrish across the half-back line. Callahan straightens and then delivers out wide in the Michael direction. He gets rid of White, gathers quite nicely, handballs out wide. McManus run down by Farmer. Pretty good tackle too, I thought, from behind. And he's being rewarded. I just thought that Clem Michael should have let Mick Shaw McManus get the ball the first time and not let him pick the footy up himself. The handball set him up. White gets the kick out wide, Robertson. Maybe there's a change that's been made down there now. I think Walker has gone on to Robertson. Well, I reckon they don't have to make a move because one-on-one, -on -one, uh, James Walker's been beaten too easily uh, uh, by Jeff Farmer. I reckon maybe even Sean McManus could go back to a back pocket or maybe a Dale kick it. Swartz, again, trying to do it all on his own and did it well. Robertson floating it. Farmer. Oh, oh still Farmer. Oh. Still he goes and then into the pocket. 
Stephen Powell was just trying to push off and play on. Uze floating down to the squares now, manned up by a heat black. Hey, Neil Danaher, don't take Jeffrey Farmer off the ground because he's one of the reasons that he's going to keep this game alive. <laughs> he is just an excitement machine. Well, Melbourne must really be considered as a genuine threat in the finals. My word, I saw them play against Essendon and they got within two goals of the Bombers. And one of the reasons is they've got a lot of players that can kick goals. Stephen Powell is one of those players. And he had a good year, Stephen Powell, My since word. Uh, crossing from the Western Bulldogs. His kicked, ability to run hard or... Kicked 18 goals before today. 18, Hutto, has he? No, his ability to run all day. Here we are, see Farmer spin around Sean McManus. Threw the ball out, showed the dummy, and just brilliant foot schools had a fine Steve, Stephen Powell. As I said, he's been one of those brilliant midfielders before Woden Lee and Chelly and Regani had great years. Well, terrific kick by Stephen Powell to uh, kick another goal for Melbourne, their 14th. Mark has been taken by Walsh. Goes short. Whoa, Woden, can he spin out of trouble? Good tackle by Dodd. Ball spills for McManus. McManus now out wide looking for a bandy he's been interfered with by Ingerson very very tiggy touch with certainly was interference by the Melbourne player no argument coming from Anthony Ingerson free kick to Daniel Bandy Bandy kicks in towards the forward pocket Waterhouse good mark very good mark to uh, Waterhouse out in front of his face in front of Collins and Waterhouse will shoot for his second goal. Fremantle's fifth. They trail so, lamentably on that scoreboard. 14-4 to 4-5. So Rob, it looks like James Clement now has been moved back onto Jeff Farm. So the move has been made by Damien Drum. Looks like, I think as Hutto said, Young Walker's picking up Robertson. So we're watching Waterhouse shoot for goal. Good kick. Very good kick by Waterhouse. He's kicked his second. Free hour have got their fifth. Two goals, two to Clive Waterhouse. Before today, he kicked in excess of 40 goals. Uh, Doug, he kicked 42 goals, 26. So now up to 44, he could kick 50 goals for the season. I reckon this fellow cops a bit unfair criticism sometimes because sometimes he's very consistent. And I think he started football fairly late and, uh, you know, he's kicked two goals and he's a very dangerous player. As you just said, he's kicked up a fair swag of goals. So that's a good return. A good kick by Daniel Bandy too to set it up. 14-4, plays 5-5. What? Very aggressive as he attacked the ball, thumped it down. Couldn't quite get it to a teammate in the end and went after it again, but close to the line. McManus and Nathan Brown colliding. Schwartz, Cook. McManus just blindly, well not blindly, but very quickly getting it moving. Free kick to Sean McManus. In front of it was David Schwartz. Goes backwards to bring Norwich into the play. Waterhouse is lurking again. He's got clear, touched the mark. Thought about laying the handball off, but decided against it. Modra might double back. Waterhouse will kick to a vacant square. Pavlich has pushed forward, and he's almost oh. taken the mark. And I wouldn't mind seeing Pavlich playing forward. He may have gone to the forward line now by the look of that. He was beaten by David Neetup at the other end of the ground. And uh, I think in the end, he'll probably be a centre-half forward for Fremantle in years to come. Callahan not able to pick it up. Pavlic goes again. Got the handball to Michael. He was looking there like he wasn't ready. Modra, a little untidy. Pavlic off the ground. Can't score. 5-6 to 14-4. Just trying to work out where David Neitz is at the moment here. How do we... Um... No, he's playing still at full forward, and um, Pavlich certainly is his opponent, so no doubt Pavlich has run down the ground. So it's a good play by the young player to drag his player down the ground. So good football by Pavlich. Uze kicking in, looking to the outer side, couldn't get white. Now Wo Woden pumps it up, and the handball McDonald had to wait for it. Got a high tackle, not seen by the umpire. Norwich almost handballed to the umpire. Walsh goes in and picks it up. Gives it out to Wawoden. 70 from goal. Look at Farmer again. Well, 
Didn't have much to see that time as the ball went over the line and out of bounds. I like the move of Clement too, just quietly on to Jeff Farmer. One on one, Clement's very, very good in that area. And at ground level for a reasonably tall player is James Clement. He's pretty good at ground level as well. So Farmer appealing to the umpire there, uh, John Harvey in that area of the ground for a uh, jumper pulling infringement. Johnny Harvey. Maybe just explaining to Jeffrey that he's got the whistle. Well, oh, lovely little oh. tap. Powell caught. Had, had prior opportunity, actually. Farmer, deep in the pocket, <laughs> and kicks it over on the full. What a tackle that was on Powell. It was so fierce, wasn't it? And you wonder when, the, this. <laughs> when the tackle is efficient like that and fair, and the player has that prior opportunity, it went unrewarded. This is Dodd with the football in the left back pocket for Frio. 5 6 to 14 4. Dodd goes across the goal at which he is defending. Out wide, Fuster. Fuster. A high kick. An awful kick. He's getting paid in excess of $200,000 a year to kick the ball like that. Brown receiving. Kicks it in towards half forward. Goes through all players in that area of the ground. James Walker gathers. Kicks out in front of McManus. And there's an indication that uh, he is really struggling, McManus. And a chance for Powell to get his second goal for the term. Off to Uze. Bit of pressure applied there, so good work by the Fremantle players in that area of the ground to make sure they kept making it difficult for Melbourne. Neitz goes in towards the half-forward area, gathered by Leon Celli. Leon Celli's kick to the goal square. Up high, Powell. Punched away. Hit the fall of the ball as McManus. Tried to get it to Black. In turn, Dale kick it. He got the hand pass away. Dodd goes wider. Walker, a long kick out to Waterhouse. Couldn't take the mark. Free kick has been found against Fremantle. And will be taken by the player lying across the Stephen Powell looks like And he's in a bit of strife. He is in a bit of strife. He's been knocked out. Stephen Powell, um, Robin? It could be by the look of... Uh, actually, Powell doesn't wear a no, glove. Sorry, it's not Powell. Brown, I think Brown, it is. Nathan yeah. Brown, is it? It might have been yeah. Waterhouse's leg that came in from behind and hit him as he fell. Yeah, yeah so I think it's right. Look at that, two going flying. Now, away from that, the Fremantle player in Waterhouse also limping away from that incident, but the most concerned person now is for this young fella. He has not regained consciousness. Well, it was purely accidental, and uh, he's been playing good footy too, Nathan. Uh, he, he, has, half he has. I think he's been yes, in very good he form. Had one 14, of the younger players. Fourteen possessions so far in the game. Yeah. The two sides meet together. Have another look here, Doug. Here we are. Yep. Oh, oh, he did yeah, too. Knee, knee in the back of the head. He caught it well, Robert. You did pick that one up. I, I thought he just cleared him, the uh, the pack there, uh, Clive Waterhouse. But he and the boy, the he boy going the for the ball in front, young Brown, would not have been aware. I mean, he's got to try and keep his eye on the ball. Yep. And he would not be aware of the uh, ferocity of the players, both uh, Waterhouse and I think the other player may have been Ward in that uh and in your that water marking contest. Over, yep. and they were coming in with their attack on the ball with their eyes on the ball as well and uh, i guess it's waterhouse's leg that made contact it's his left leg that made contact with young brown and he is favoring that but uh, the medical staff do a terrific job with the young blokes on the ground now making sure that it, uh, every precaution is taken you just hate seeing it, don't you? Yes. Hello, Robbo. You just oh, hate yeah, seeing yeah. Uh, yeah. a player injured like this because yeah. it just makes you a bit sick in the guts, I reckon. Just makes you cool. Cool, cool. He was carried off the ground on a stretcher, but he was able to come back later uh, during the game and sit on the bench. So hopefully it's not as bad as it looked. We believe he has concussion, and that's pretty good news because it did look serious, the collision with Clive Waterhouse. We're going to rejoin the action in the third quarter, and the Demons have added two points. It's hard to concentrate on the footy after yeah, it's that just, incident, it's isn't it? It makes, you, yeah, it makes you quick in the stomach, it certainly does. 
So the boundary throw-in, we're watching Clive Waterhouse. Uh, he was involved in that clash with young Nathan Brown, which led to Brown being taken to the rooms on a stretcher. And we're um, try endeavouring to make contact with the medical staff for Melbourne and uh, just check on uh, the condition of Nathan Brown. But Waterhouse presently on the bench with uh, a leg injury. He's loosening up, but he's got his left knee just above the left knee heavily bandaged with plenty of ice yep certainly there's robertson coming off the ground here uh, at the moment clem michael now has gone the full forward with water waterhouse off the ground modra has gone to center half forward johnston's kick into the full forward area kicked away out wide and gathered by walker handball to mcmanus he'll straighten up onto his right and then kick it high in towards the full forward area. No mark taken. Ingerson does a fairly consistent job week in, week out on a tall forward. Norrish. Bootsma. Back to Norrish. Norrish into the middle. And the mark is taken by Kicket. Kicket and McManus. Two very important players over the last two or three years for Fremantle. Both look as though they're playing with uh, very little confidence. No doubt about that, Robert. They started on the bench, both players, and uh, as we've said a couple of times now, McManus came on uh, fairly late in that second quarter, and I think Tigger did the same thing as well. So both obviously must be out a bit of touch at the moment. Daniel Bandy has the ball about 40 metres from goal, directly in front. He's kicked one of Fremantle's five goals so far, and he has now kicked one goal one of that Fremantle scoreline, which reads 5-7 to 14-6. So not, not quite a nine-goal margin in favour of Melbourne. 53 points to be exact. And we've got nine minutes left in the third term. Kick in by Uze is very good. Spotted Rigoni and found him. Rigoni forced to kick with the left because he desperately wanted to play on. And then a kick as well, Mark, Mark. For a Mark. big fellow, he's about six foot eight in the old. Didn't he get down well, Daniel Bandy, to take that mark? Bootsma, down the line. Coops may go for goal. He unloads and misses everything. Tony Modra would not be very happy with that. He was out he of the lead. You're right, Hutto. You called it beautifully, Hutto. He was on the lead. The kick should have been to Tony Modra. It just looks like now that uh, Clem Michael's having a bit of a spell. He was at full forward and Daniel Shell has gone to full forward. Troy Cook's leap was uh, impressive. Unfortunately, didn't take the ball with him. Bruce Simmons now as the Demons attack over the head of Green. Clement, oh dear. Whoa. The troops were arriving and he just couldn't get a handle on the ball. Farmer almost made the great steal. Oh, he goes again. He's got it again. He is a thief. He's the best. He is a thief. He's a crook. You know, uh, when you watch, a, I know it's an, a different code altogether, yeah, but when we watch the boys running in the other codes and all they're doing is just trying to rush it forward, that was a terrific example of just getting it into a position, wasn't it? Watch right, this. Lead watch this. what happened. Yeah. Force it forward. Eventually dispossess. He pinched that. Yeah, oh, he's just a yeah, genius. He caught, Hada, he caught it beautifully. He just popped that. He just, just grabbed it out of the hands. I think it might have been Don. And Nick. He's, kicked, he's kicked five goals now. He's been brilliant. Oh, his attack on the man and the ball, enormous Jeffrey Farmer, and he's kicked five of Melbourne's 15 goals. They'll go forward once again, but the hand pass from Stephen Powell, intercepted by Norrish, the kick to left half forward. Well done by Coops, but not able to keep the ball moving in his direction. So Melbourne, through Collins and Walsh, combine and get the ball down towards the wing and in front of Cameron Bruce goes over for a boundary throw in. We have some news on Nathan Brown and uh, so far it's good. He has woken up in the rooms and the neck brace was considered a precaution. So hopefully uh, he'll be okay. Good news, Hutto. Well, that is great news. news there, my word. So just forward of the wing, boundary throw in. Fuster doing the ruck work, but by gee, the ox, he's a strong man. He got rid of him. Johnson, the tackle by Fuster a little high. So Johnston will take the free kick. He doesn't mess around. He gets it off to Rigoni in support. Rigoni kicks to the front of the square. Another very disciplined kick for Melbourne. Goes all the way to a, an area about 20 metres out directly. In front. Oh, and Farmer has kicked yeah. half a dozen. <laughs> oh, yeah. Jeff 
Jeffrey Farmer started the day on 54 goals for the year. He now has 60. And he is third in line on the league goal kicking behind Matthew Lloyd and Lance Fittnell. I just wonder sometimes he realise how good he is this block. I mean, he can be just anything. I mean, I really mean that. He's just got everything going for him. He's a good mark overhead for his size. At ground level, he's brilliant. And he just kicks those goals that we all dream about. Well, oh, he's, <laughs> he's, he's a ripper. He's just a refreshing oh. person on the AFL scene. Troy Cook gets Fremantle going out of the middle. Who's a... Oh, it's everything going right. Yeah, it's all going right for them at the moment, isn't it? Thumping kick from Ragoni up to half forward. Oh, well picked up by Bruce. Gives it to Godfrey. Can he join in? No. Out on the ball. Just thought the young fella there, young Simon Godfrey, could have handballed a Stephen Powell. The handball was on, but the young fella decided to kick. Maybe an experience may have cost him there. Oh, here's a chance for McManus. Oh. Got a long way clear. Bootsman's kick. Gets in, just gets the handball to Cook. Just too far at the score. Good Great kick. Vision. Well disguised kick. And Clive's on one leg, but he takes the mark. He could play there uh, by McManus, first of all, to get rid of his uh, opponent, who was really a good tackle there. Great vision by Troy Cook. He indicated he was going to go long down the line, and uh, not many players in mid-fly can switch a decision. He did then. It was a good kick to find Waterhouse. Troy Cook's had 14 possessions this afternoon, laid six tackles. Clive, as you can see, has kicked a couple of goals, taken six marks, so he's had a crack, kicked two goals, two, and now he's got three goals, too. Well kicked. He is a good kick, isn't he? I mean, he does usually get it spinning the right way, Duck. Yep. And um, from my recollections, he does convert pretty well. There's the tackle here from Rigoni. Nearly got Sean McManus. The handball wasn't that flash, but there's that mid kick, uh, the mid the mid change in flight. Not many players can do it, Robbo. They can change their mind, and he just did it beautifully there, Troy Cook. He's been a pretty good player. I think he's had um, he's had 14 touches and six good tackles. Clive Waterhouse has kicked 45 goals, 28 for the year. Been good, mainly as a half forward flanker. Well, very important that uh, they probably get another person down there in support of uh, Waterhouse and Modra. McManus goes out wide. Oh. Bootsman couldn't take the mark. Taken away by Collins. Got the handball to Uze. Uze, little left foot kick. Not too bad, actually. Gathered by Bruce. Back to Collins. Too high there for Woden, but gathered by Johnston. If he realises his potential, Melbourne will be a better side because he can play Travis Johnston. Out wide, Leon Chelly. Another goal coming up. Stephen Powley, second for the quarter. And he got bang, and he kicks a goal. Very much a drill there for Melbourne. And again, they got a goal from right in front through Powell. It is amazing, uh, Robo and Hutto, here. We see the Demons turn the ball over twice with shock and handballs. I mean... I think one was the Travis Johnson one, and I think one went to the centre of the ground. I'm not sure who it was. But they still had the ability to find a teammate on their own in Stephen Powell. I mean, it's just amazing. I mean, they are a fairly good side, this Melbourne side. They're, well, they're well drilled. Yep. Powell with 18 possessions and a couple of goals. Been good, hasn't he? 17-6 to 6-7. Whoa, whoa. And that was training stuff as well, practising the centre bounces. No oh. understanding there. Oh, jeez. Oh, Farmer got crunched that time. Johnson. Back to Swartz. Standing start. Will he go bang? No, he spots up. Shame well Woden. Actually, I spoke to Danny Corcoran in the rooms so when I went down to try and organise the interview with Neil Danaher. And he made a point. They are knocking on the door, Melbourne. They're in the four. They probably will stay in the four. And they lost some terrific players over the last 12 or 18 months. Yeah. Steins, Viney, Lyon, G. Lovett, B. Lovett. And he, named, place, and he yeah. named a couple of others too. Yep. And with a group of young blokes intermingled with two or three of the David Schwartz and the David Neitz, etc., and Jeff White, they are in the four and they look as though they're going to be there to stay. Well, they want to do better at kicking a goal than that. A little effort from Shane Woe Woden. His game today, perhaps just fractionally down. 
Oh, his best during the years had 14 possessions, kicked two behinds. Norwich has had the job on him today. Fremantle, six goals, seven. 43, Melbourne, 17, oh. seven. Oh, no. Farmer again. Oh, oh he man. handballs. And... Kyle <laughs> to green. That's a very good sign, Doug, don't you think? You know, that he's, he's prepared to just be aware that there are other people that are in a better position to kick the goal than he. Yep. He could have a left foot snap there, Jeff Farmer, yeah. to make seven goals. Brad Green, I think, is coming from the ground to give Russell Robertson a run. Green's now has kicked three goals and been a very player in their full line. But you're right. Well, you, you wouldn't lay odds that he won't kick seven anyway, would you, with another well, quarter he might plus kick four ten. minutes? He might get ten, yeah. this bloke. Double figures. That was good, unselfish football yeah. by Jeff Farmer. Yep. Team yeah. football. Disappointing, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think we'll all, remember, face, we'll all remember that magnificent goal he kicked in the first term. Yeah. Oh, look at White. What a great climb over the top. It's just, uh, it's hard to hit a man when you do that, but you, it looks sensational, doesn't it? word, yeah. And it moves the ball forward, puts the defence under pressure. McManus gathers, gets back onto his right, kicks in the direction of Modra. Good mark taken back there by Nicholson. Walsh, Ingerson, Collins, prepared to handball off Uze. Wo Woden, can he get free? Gives it back to Uze. Uze just bangs away. That was a little arrogant there by Adam Uze. Mm. Cook gathers and kicks in towards half forward. Waterhouse, but he's got four to contend with. One of those was Godfrey. Out wide, Johnston. Well tackled by Bootsma. Locked up. Umpire will bounce. Big scoreline now, isn't it, for Melbourne? They've kicked 19 goals to six. 18 goals to six, and they lead by exactly 12. 115 to 43. 72 points is the margin the uh, inside 54 the match melbourne 48 times to the dockers 28 so 20 times more they have gone inside 50 to demons for their is it 18 goals and we've watched with interest the discipline where they've tried to get it in front of goals that's too, right haven't we? yep so that's back in the middle and dockers able to go forward this time Good walker's man. kicked up wall takes it and he's got a man it was a good kick too, went 60, 50 metres to get Rigoni on the wing. A couple of players leading out. He switches a little dangerously. Schwartz had a run up at the end just to get the spoil in. Hayes will be doing the roving. Clement goes to half forward. Pavlich now is playing up forward. Takes the mark. But Boots were in board, ignores him. Bandy pushing forward as well. Shell back in the square, leads out. Warehouse is back there as well, being manned up. Hayes will be quiet in this term with just three possessions. Matthew Pavlich. That was a big kick. big kick. It's a big, booming oh. kick from Matthew Pavlich for a goal. So he can kick a goal. He's kicked 13 for the year. And as I said earlier, I suspect he may well end up as a key forward. For the free man lockers in the long run. Yeah, I think you're right, Hutter, no doubt about that. He uh, played most of the game down at fullback on David Neitz. It looks like Clem Michael's playing at fullback now. He's been moved to centre half foot, and uh, he just indicated this young fella can kick a football. And you've got a player like him, you've got Hazelby in the side as well. Some good young talent. Well, a terrific kick and goal to Matthew Pavlich. That is uh, free man's seventh goal. Margin back to. 66 points. I agree with you, Hutto. When you see Jeff White jump high, get hands on the ball, force it oh. forward, he is just an exciting player. Uze's kick is terrific. Did you see the handball in from Guy Rigoni that got that going. It was absolutely superb. They've got great understanding, haven't they? Uh, it, it's Woden, Leon Celli, Uze, Rigoni. Anyone I've missed there of those, and Stephen Powell. There's Nathan Brown coming around. around. That's fantastic. That's good to see Robbo Hutto on a terrific. And the goal has been kicked by the Ox, David Schwartz. A couple of goals to uh, David Schwartz. Eight goal kickers now for the Demons. They've got their 19th on the scoreboard. That was just a, a little clip there of Nathan Brown. Here's Ragoni. Look at this handball. Bang. 
quick hands one that looks like Clem Michael sorry he's been moved on the Swartz at this stage and um, as I said before uh, sorry take that back again he's back in the rock now. yeah Bandy's playing at full back on Swartz well it must have they must have just made the switch then Doug yep Fuse is playing on uh, Neat. Uh, White was just giving them an armchair right out of the middle Ragoni here's Jeffrey get out of his way gets the handball to Godfrey <laughs> he got crunched Farmer goes again and he goes again. That was really a throw. There was three throws in there. Yeah, <laughs> it was. Fremantle a little bit unlucky as the ball out of bounds. Here we are. Um, 19 goals from Melbourne. 17 of the 19 have come directly straight in front of goal. Yeah. 17 of the 19. Well, they work the ball into the, wherever they are on the ground. Oh, By the time yeah. they get over the centre, they try and work it through that centre half forward area. Yep. And it makes it, your, your goal kick is going to be more accurate, isn't it? Yep. Only, uh, only makes perfect sense. Callahan off the ground, wobbly one. Fletcher from the Pavlich handball. It was a strange old handball. Troy Cook somewhat laconically fires away successfully at goal and kicks Fremantle's eighth goal. Eighth goal. I looked up very at the scoreboard and could not see it. Very hard thing. with the. Uh, is that the Rialto building? No, it's not. Is that the Rialto building up there for the Sun Glaring? Yes, I think it, it is. is. Yep. Very hard to see, but Cook's been good, and he had a very good that's game. Your, that's your penthouse apartment up there, isn't it, Dougie? On the 25th floor, I think it is. That is something <laughs> that uh, that we could look at. That because is, uh, when right. the roof is open and it's a sunny day, yep. that is very hard to see, that uh, that scoreboard over there. It's been good Cook, Henny today. Oh, been yes. Terrific. Yes. Troy Cook. And McManus' this quarter's been pretty good. He's had... Sean McManus had eight touches this quarter. Cook's been good in each quarter, Doug. Five yep. in the first, six in the second, six in the third so far. Yep. McManus working industriously at the bottom of the pack. So is Woe Woden. And Woe Woden able to get his kick away. Bootsma. Oh, oh beautiful. Oh, good hand. Green. Bruce it was to Uze. And Uze has kicked the goal. That hasn't been touched. That's a goal. Kicked by Adam Uze. Eight goals to four in the third term, and by the last change, they led 27 to eight goals seven. What a performance by the Demons, who are eyeing off a top four spot. We pick it up early in the last term. In trouble behind play is Uze, just limping ever so slightly. Bootsman a swoop on it, run down, and uh, pressure applied there by Uze. It was Ragoni that was in strife behind play. Another player taken high as he was trying to stream clear of defence was Daniel Ward. And Ward will take the free kick for Melbourne. Goes in the direction of Bruce. Couldn't take the mark. Johnston at the fall of the ball. Gathers and then kicks. Oh, Great beautifully. School. Beautifully, wasn't it? And McDonald goes directly towards goal. Third in line. Couldn't take the mark. Now Farmer. Bandy. Bandy kicks it back towards the right half back area. Awkward bouncing ball. Gathered by Hazelby, a high kick, a floater, punched away there from Jones by uh, Wo Woden. Gathered by Kickett, kick it in towards full forward, and the mark is taken down here in this uh, left forward pocket for Fremantle by Shell. Good kick there, Robbo, by uh, Luke Dale Kick on that occasion. I mean, he looked like he was going to go directly down the corridor, but decided to kick it to the outside, and good football by Dale Kick it to find Shell. Shell kicking for goal from about 40 metres out. Gets onto it quite nicely, but just floating away with the breeze off to the left and through for a behind. Looks like uh, Jones coming from the ground looked like it may be a leg injury. He'll be replaced by Adrian Fletcher. What would it be the biggest score by Melbourne beating the Dockers? Uh, anyone have any idea of that one? I think back in 95 they won by 52 points from memory, Dougie. Really done, Hutto. That was the Dockers' first year in the competition, though, from memory. <laughs> Ragoni <laughs> takes the mark, cross half back. Done comedy for a long time, Dougie, or you just started? <laughs> We're a team, Hutto. Who's <laughs> Up onto the wing, wasn't a good uh, bit of work there at all. Pavlich won't quite get to the contest. Ingerson takes the mark. Goes short, or oh, dangerous kick. Poor kick in the end. And Hazelby's. No, it's Black, is it? Yep. Stepping in to take the mark. Heath Black. Black. Right. 
from outside 50. He uh, was renowned in his early days as a good kick, but he's been a little off target today, both uh, shooting at goal there and around the ground. So behind on the board, Fremantle 8-9, Melbourne 21-7. I'll tell you what, we all rave about the uh, Carlton, the Essendon midfield. I'll tell you what, boys, this Melbourne midfield is as good as any. They're hard running, they're fit. They work well together, Lee and Chelly, by Woden, Regoni, the list goes on. This midfield is as good as any. Kick in, taken by Johnston, got it back from Leon Chelly, and then kick with the left, mark taken by Pavlich. Looked as if he was endeavouring to play on, but then forced to go back and take his kick. Found Hazelby. Oh, Hazelby. Oh, that's disappointing. And that really does tell the story of the day for the Dockers. He's a better player than that. And he's endeavours to try and get the ball on quickly. He missed his target and kicked it out of bounds on the full contest at uh, just forward of the wing for Melbourne. Cook gets the ball out to Hazelby. He's well tackled by Godfrey. The spillage was uh, gathered by Green. Off to Johnston. Doesn't he Great kick the ball well? It, it, look, I tell you, he's still got tremendous football in front of himself, Joe Travis Johnston. Eventually, Bruce over the top. Goal kick by Schwartz. Three goals to Schwartz. That kick made it into the third tier, the top tier. I'm not sure that I've seen that here before. Is percentage important for Melbourne in their endeavours to not stay in front of Geelong? They not look really, around about no. 17. Not really. What about the overcoming uh, the Kangaroos? Can they get higher? Well, the Kangaroos play Collingwood and St Kilda in their last two matches, so you wouldn't think they would lose either of those, but you never know if they do. But Melbourne's percentage is way out in front of all the rest of the teams below them now. Well, this does no, their percentage no harm whatsoever, Melbourne. 14 goals, not quite 14 goals, 22, 7 to 8, 9, still 15 minutes left. Yes, what a great spread of goals has been. Farmer, six goals, Green, three, Schwartz, three, Neats, three. Free kick out of the middle going to Stephen Michael. If I said at the start of the game, boys, that Melbourne win by 14 goals plus, you'd think I was joking. I yep. mean, the, the gap of the side, these two sides ain't that much of a gap, but I tell you what, the Melbourne side have been terrific, and I reckon Damien Drum would be dirty the way that the uh, Dockers have played here today. It's been that sort of year for Fremantle, oh, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, hot and cold. Had, had some good matches, and then you think they've sort of turned the corner a little bit, and then they've put in a couple of shockers. And they've uh, been on the end of a few hidings from, well, the quality teams, really. Essendon, and that's no shame in that, but Carlton stitched them up. I think the Bulldogs stitched them up over at home. Uh, Kangaroos had a pretty solid win over them, so they've, uh, they've been beaten pretty soundly by the top team, so there's still a way to go, and I know they're very much aware of that. All out of bounds. But I just reckon, too, Damien Drum's doing the right thing. He's playing the young kids, and I just, just want to, I just reckon in two or three years' time, with these guys playing more football together, particularly the younger players, they're going to be pretty, pretty handy side, the Fremantle Dockers. Yeah, they've certainly got a future. They can just get a couple couple of more players in, key position players. There's a goal. Maybe one or two more on ball as they'll be away. But uh, in the meantime, they've got to watch as McDonald came streaming down the ground. Long kick to full forward. The Ox was trying to clear a path, but he was beaten in the end. And... Kick two out onto the wing. Cook takes the mark. It's a good play from Clement to get them uh, forward. Pavlich, black, under pressure. In the end, it comes back to Cook. Oh, he's held on to it for a while and holds on to it for a while. Lee and Sally put the head down. In goes Michael, feeding past McManus. And the Demon defence able to combine and safely see the ball. Up to Robertson, who takes the takes the ball, he gets it oh. on Farmer. That was <laughs> a bit of matter over. anyway. They're still going to get it. Over finessing, <laughs> Uze gives it to Farmer. Can he get through here? Takes them on. Oh. Come on, Jeff, have a shot. He does. To the goal of the goal. year. Oh. Oh. Goal, goal of the year. year. Absolute goal of the year. Oh, it's oh. showtime now. Hutto, that was just absolutely sensational. I was going to give him a spray for that little tap on. Yeah. I won't do it. I will not spray him after that. He's redeemed himself. Look, we watch again, Doug. This was a tap on the that tap you on referred to. Not, but look at the three. There they outnumber. And they keep running. Bang. Oh, look at this. 
How's your father? Oh. At full speed, too. That's oh, hard to he's do that. A genius. <laughs> oh. What did you say? It's showtime. Yeah, it yeah. is. Oh, it just... says join in with me. I'm on fire. Yeah. He is just he's a ripper, isn't he? Entertainment time. A oh. la Jeff Armour. Huh? <laughs> this bloke played pretty well. And to think that he came from uh, the, one of the country leagues. I think it was de up at Myrtleford, Myrtleford was yep. it? Yeah. Myrtleford. Here he goes again. He was held off the ball there, and uh, the umpire allowed play to go on. And eventually, McManus off the left has kicked it out on the full. Well, Fremantle would do well to just hold Melbourne up here. They've uh, the Demons have kicked. Uh, what have they kicked? About 23 goals now. Um, yeah, 22 or 23, 23 goals. 23 goals. And if they get close to 30, yeah. it will be an embarrassment for Fremantle. There's still plenty of time left for Melbourne to add to their goal tally. Frio have to stand up and make every kick hard to get. Pavlich probably could have nearly ran it through. Look at Uze's kick. Woe Woden, take it to the ground, got the hand pass away. Who's on the end of it? One of the teammates in Schwartz. Cook shrugs the tackle. Good kick. And oh. the kick has been dropped by Fletcher. And he's tackled over the top, Lee and Chelly, and he's been penalised for holding the ball. Well, he's now, you couldn't rub him. salt into the wound any more so there, could you? Than penalise Fletcher, who has been a, a tremendous goer for Fremantle. Uze into the middle, and slipping over was a McDonald. He kicks to full forward. Oh, and no! Kick. He took it easy. Free kick, is it? Has to be a free kick to Farmer against kick it, I reckon, Robbo. Gee, he looked to certainly to take the mark. Yes, the umpire indicating that uh, there was a push out. That's a free kick. Fair call, Robbo. Yeah, well, I, thought Jeffrey, I thought Jeffrey Farmer may have taken his eyes off the ball there when it was coming in. Probably should have taken the mark. There wasn't much in that, was there? Didn't like it much. I don't know that one. Well. I guess the reverse angle would show just how high the tackle was. But contact, yeah. Certainly wasn't contact when he flew for the ball. When he was going for the mark, he was not interfered with at all. It was only afterwards. Farmer from about 30 metres, slight angle, going for goal number eight. He's put it through. Eight goals for Jeffrey Farmer. their merry way and finished up winning by 83 points a fantastic performance with a top four spot in their sights they finished up kicking 25 goals 10 160 to 11 11 77 the margin 83 points the wizard jeff farmer kicked eight green neats and schwartz each kicked three and for the dockers clive waterhouse the leading goal scorer with three goals the coca-cola afl premiership season 2000 proudly brought to you by Victoria Bitter. Mitsubishi Magna V6. One drive and your hook. McDonald's. McCatch, match and win. And Telstra. Making life easier. And the ladder with two rounds to go. The Bombers still unbeaten after 20 rounds. And the Blues didn't lose any friends on Friday night. The Kangaroos, well, their defeat might yet be caught. I weighed up my options for about three, three years. Um, in that, I suppose... Uh, footy basically came along when I came back from England. Um, yeah, I started playing, you know, school footy and that's where it all started from. Not only is he now spreading the code's word, but he's become one of Melbourne's secret weapons in its eyebrow-raising surge up the ladder. And some wise football heads are singing his praises. I'll tell you, he's a special little player for them. He did by the name of Brad Green. Very good. Well, I've seen a lot of him stand. I think he's a terrific player. I suppose when you turn up at any AFL club, you think, oh, you know, you're around these legends such as David Needs, Jeff Farmer, David Schwartz, and I suppose you're overawed by, by these type of guys when you walk into the club to start with, and you think, geez, I don't know if I'll be able to match it with them. But, you know, once you get it started into a pre-season and get a full pre-season under your belt, you think, yeah, I, I might be able to get there. And to, to look back at and played 14 games already, it's... I wouldn't, wouldn't have believed it at the start of the year. When we started playing our practice games, you know, 
it wasn't that much of a difference to, to back home and um, I just thought back then, yeah, you know, maybe one day, yeah, I might make it. It's pretty evident, isn't it, that Brad Green is a man of vast and varied athletic talents. But fortunately for Melbourne fans, footy was his first love. It's time now to take a look at all the other matches of Round 20. On Saturday at the end in pursuit of a top four finish were too classy for Frio, booting eight first quarter goals to lead by six goals at quarter time. Having an impact, but Farmer might do it the hard way. Farmer does it the hard oh, way. He, doesn't. he, hasn't. he has to make it look harder than it is, and he kicks it. Before adding another four in the second quarter to open up a 47 point half time lead. Good solid contact in the Swartz direction. He brought it to Graham, brought it in front. Lee and Shelley lays it off. Uze! With Farmer on fire up forward, the D's kicked 13 goals in the second half to run out massive 83 point winners. Kicking 25 goals, 10 behinds, 160 points to Fremantle, 11 goals, 11 behinds, 77 points. And welcome back. Well, if today's game over in Perth is half as exciting as last week's, we should be in for an absolute.